All right, it's 6.30 and we'll call tonight's meeting of the Tipton Community School Board to order. I've asked Mrs. Overdorf to lead us in the pledge, so please stand. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation and under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next up is approval of consent agenda items. And those consent, consent agenda items uh, consist of the approval of tonight's agenda, approval of minutes for the December 14th, 2021 regular session, December 20, 14th, 2021 public hearing, and the January 5th, 2022 executive session. Approval of claims for December the 24th, 2021, December the 17th, 2021 payroll claims, January the 7th, 2022 payroll claims, and January 2022 accounts payable claims. Approval of uh, the, tonight's personnel report, and I will read that after we make approve this consent agenda items, and that's all we have. We don't have any field trips or any donations tonight. We need a motion to accept the consent agenda items. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. The personnel report for January. Uh, certified staff, we have a resignation. Autumn, autumn ring sign. Ring sign? <laughs> uh, speech language pathologist for Tipton Elementary School. Uh, classified staff, we have a resignation. Beth Mitchell, study tables, bus driver. Jennifer Shuck, Instructional Assistant, Tipton High School. Sarah Allison, Instructional Assistant at the Tipton Elementary School. And recommendation of Randy Carlisle, st st Study Tables Bus Driver, effective January the 4th. Uh, ECA staff, we have a recommendation of Leela Crawford, eighth grade girls basketball coach. And that is a split position. And the other recommendation is Autumn Ring Sign as the eighth grade girls basketball coach also, and they were splitting that ECA, and Beth Craner as the junior class sponsor. All right, next is something that takes place every year at the January board meeting, and that is the reorganization of the board and election of officers. Do we have motions, nominations, I move um, to retain our current officers, President Gary Plummer, Vice President Mitchell Oberdorf, Secretary Jennifer Sanders. Hold a second. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second to keep the current officers. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Next is the appointment of Treasurer and Executive Secretary of the Board. You want to help me with that? That is <laughs> our treasurer is uh, Amy, Amy Phillips. Phillips, and executive secretary of the board is Don Benefil. Need a motion to accept those two appointments? I move to accept them as <laughs> Don Benefil as secretary. Amy Phillips as treasurer. Second. A motion a second to appoint. Treasurer and Executive Secretary of the Board, all in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. Next is establishment of meeting date and time, which we discussed a little bit at the end of the work session. It is recommended we maintain our current meeting date and time as the second Tuesday of each month at 6.30 p.m., with the exception of? Tipton County Fair. Uh, July, which is interferes with the Tipton County Fair. So that meeting will be July 20th. July 20th. Okay, all in favor of the establishment of meeting date and time as presented with that one change, 
other than that one change would be Tuesday, second Tuesday of each month at 6.30 p.m. Need a motion and a second. Move to establish the meeting times as Tuesdays each month at 6.30 with the exception of July, with that month being July 20th. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. Next on the agenda for tonight is we will adjourn or recess rather tonight's regular meeting and convene the Board of Finance meeting. The Board of Finance is tonight's meeting is in two parts. The second part is a meet the second part is a meeting of the Board of Finance that we are required to hold annual annually in January. We have three functions. One is to elect president and secretary, two, to name a depository for corporation funds, and three, to receive and review an investment report. First up is election of officers. Board of Finance must elect, elect a president and secretary. President and secretary must be the same board members elected as president and secretary of the Board of Trustees. Now open the floor for nominations, president and secretary of the Board of Finance. move to nominate Gary Plummer as the president of Board of Finance and Jennifer Hummerhouse for the secretary of Board of Finance. I have a motion and a second for election of officers as stated. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. Next is designation of depositories. First Farmers Bank and Trust is a depository for the corporation funds. We currently have checking, e-funds, textbook and school lunch accounts, sweep account, which is savings. It is recommended that the board approve First Farmers Bank and Trust as depository for corporation funds. A motion and a second. I move that we approve First Farmers Bank and Trust as the depository for corporation funds. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. I'd like it noted that I abstain from a vote there. Okay. Next is review of investments. The investment report is made available to board members in the monthly financial report. This month's report for December also is the report for the end of the year. Investment earnings for 2021 was $2,871. Tipton Community School Corporation maintains a repurchase agreement account, which is a charge card through BMO Harris Bank. It is recommended the board accept the report as presented. In motion and a second. I'll move that we accept the report as stated. And a second. Motion and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> all right. Next is 2020, 2022 expenditure and revenue projections. The attached are detailed projections of revenue and expenditures for 2022. Uh, in the education fund, revenue is expected $10,398,887 and expenditures are expected to be $9,867,394. In the operations fund, Revenue is expected to be $4,052,324. Expenditures expected to be $4,036,879. In the debt service fund, uh, uh, revenue projections are $2,944,250. Expenditures are projected at $2,808,191. Total of all the funds, uh, Revenue projections are $17,495,461, and total expected re expenditures is $16,723,23,173. So that would be a projection ending, uh, ending in 2022 with a positive $772,288. It's all projections. And uh, it would be important to remember, too, that, you know, revenue is is pretty solid. Expenditures, we always budget high. 
So just because that's projected doesn't mean it's water. And uh, one thing that I would note is you will notice the revenue and operations um, in, and the expenditures in operations is pretty tight. Um, and, uh, and that is essentially because we are not transferring funds out of the education fund into the operations fund. If we were if we were to do that, we probably would have an additional six hundred thousand dollars in the operations fund revenue. And next on the agenda is written report of the financial condition of Tipton Community School Corporation. During the Board of Finance meeting, the board must receive a written report on the financial condition of the school corporation. In reporting on the school corporation's financial conditions, the fiscal and qualitative indicators determined by the fiscal and qualitative indicator committee are used for the basis of this report, and you had that in your packet. Any questions or anything on that? Report. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I do have a financial indicators report, um, and essentially, when we're when I'm giving you the financial indicators, this is. Uh, from 2020, so it is a bit dated, uh, but uh, essentially what's happened is um, the state of Indiana went out of the business of taking over schools, uh, and I think we're all happy about that, And uh, but what they did is create this distressed unit appeal board, So, which means I have to have an annual conversation with you on the financial uh, security of our district, okay? If you want to see a bunch of numbers and a bunch of fun things, this interactive website is located right here. Uh, do make sure that you have, um, you are looking at Tipton information because it opens up to Adam Central. Um, and anytime you do hit the back button, it goes back to Adam Central. And when you're a superintendent trying to do this report and you're going, wait a minute, I don't even know what that number is. You're looking at Adam Central stuff. <laughs> so anyway, just letting you know if you decide to do that and use a back button. So anyway, um, so you're welcome to uh, to look at that anytime you want. Um, so essentially, uh, what it does, what what the, what what this report will do is it takes a look at at ADM. So looking at our enrollment trends because, as we all know, um, dollars do follow the student. Um, so you can see a bit of a steady decline um, in, in our enrollment numbers. Um, and the, the nice thing, as you look at this trend, um, the, the fall to the spring, um, we lost fewer students than we had in, in the past. So that is an encouraging sign. And then our current ADM, uh, again, showed that we are we are stabilizing. We are not losing students, and uh, projections for the spring um, would would say that as well. So we are beginning to stabilize as far as ADM, uh, which can do nothing but help our financial picture. Uh, this is just a graph that I took off of the uh, Duab um, website. And just kind of kind of shows you um, the difference between uh, the fall in person and spring in person. Um, one thing that we will see different in the 2021 uh, report is virtual uh, because of the number of students that uh, are characterized now as virtual. So you will see more of this orange and I guess lighter orange um, when we get next year's report. Uh, the other part of, of what we need to discuss are fund balances. So uh, we've made no uh, secret about what we've had to do with the education fund in order to make ends meet. Um, again, we've had several years of declining enrollment and um, not really any reduction in staff. Um, so that created uh, 
some real issues for us where we had to borrow money uh, from, or actually not borrow, but we had to transfer money uh, from our rainy day funds in order to make ends meet. Um, so what you will see in, um, in this, our cash balance in 2019 was 552,000. Uh, again, there was a transfer from the rainy day fund in order to create that. Um, and in 2020, we had a cash balance of 203,000 in the education fund. In 2021, we had a cash balance of 209,000, but please note that we did not transfer money from the rainy day fund. So that's positive, okay? Um, even though it doesn't look positive, it is a positive. So it, but it's hard to really show that, that, um, that's a positive unless you have that information about the transfer. Um, we are projecting a $1.1 million cash balance without the transfer of $600,000 to the rainy day fund. And once again, uh, when we're in budgeting 101 and what the state prefers us to have is a 20% cash balance in order for us to be able to pay up to three months of payroll. So by the end of 2022, we will be halfway there, which I think is exciting news. Um, when also when we're looking at the operations uh, cash balance, again we have been limiting the transfers uh, that go from the the education fund into the operations fund. So you will see a decline in cash balance because of that, and because we have taken, we have, we have um, had some projects that we've been doing, um, some upgrades, and so that has had a, a bit of an impact on our cash balance uh, in those in in that category. Again, the magic number is twenty percent, and as you can see, um, overall in the operations fund, we are are well over that. Uh, overall, uh, overall uh, balance, so this would be all of the funds. Now, if you do go on the DOAB site, they're going to have a lot of funds in their uh, revenue that really, I mean, some of which we can't even use um, for. Uh, specifically for payroll or within operations, some of it's federal grants, some of it is um, some other some other money that we would get. Um, so when you're looking at this, what I've what I've done is I've taken out all those other funds and just put in the operations fund, the education fund, and the rainy day fund. So that's all you see here. So you might go on and go, well, that doesn't make sense it says we have x well it's because i've tried to pull those other funds out so we can just get a clearer picture of really where we are um, because you can't spend title one funds on certain things you can't spend uh, title three funds on certain things and that's all lumped in there so um, as we're looking you know overall cash balance this would include our rainy day fund uh, we're we're in pretty good shape and then we're projecting a a 6.6 .6 million dollar um, projected cash balance over all of the funds at the end of upcoming year. So, I mean, we're making slow and good progress. I think we've, we've, we've really righted the ship a bit in our finances. Um, so we're still going to have to do a couple of other things um, as we're moving forward, um, uh, particularly in operations. Uh, but I think we've definitely made some good moves as far as um, you know, making sure that we are fiscally responsible and and have enough cash balance that we don't have to get a loan every month to make payroll, and uh, there are corporations out there that do that. Just kind of give you a snapshot. My good friend Bob, who loves numbers more than I will ever love numbers, <laughs> um, just kind of gave a, a projection of just some different schools uh, around here, uh, different sizes 
but just to kind of let you know how we we um, look compared to them. Um, and again, that number all the way over uh, to the right is education operations and rainy day fund balances. Um, there, we have kind of a scary cash balance in, in the education fund right now compared to everybody else. But when you add in the other funds, we're one of the higher. So again, uh, you know, part of this, part of this whole process with um, that we're going through is to make sure that you're making good, excuse me, making good decisions with our finances so that we don't get in trouble and which would require us to have a state takeover, which the state really doesn't want to do anyway. Um, this is the annual deficit surplus. You're going to notice that um, over the course of 14 and 15, and then also in 19 and 20, we do have a we do have a deficit, which means we borrowed money, or not borrowed money. I keep saying that we have transferred money from the rainy day fund in order to make things work. That also happened in 15, in 14 15 um, when the the big decline in enrollment hit. And so there had to be some adjustments made at that point as well. Um, so we never want to see deficit spending. And uh, but this is you know one of those examples uh, where that has had to be done in order to make um, make everything work. Um, that number uh, for 2021 should not we did not have to to go into a deficit to make ends meet. Um, and so that number should look better next year, and then the year after that, we shouldn't have it. We don't look at anything like that. It's negative. So, um, so anyway, again, encouraging signs. I think that you know we are we are doing the right things financially. Uh, again, this is the whole uh, cash balance by fund as a as a percent of expenditures. That's um, again the number that in the presentation earlier, but you can see it has gone down because again, this has had an impact on our cash balances as we tried to right the ship. Um, this is uh, revenue that comes in, as, as you can see, um, vast majority of uh, the revenue does come from the state. Um, we do get some federal revenue uh, debt service, you're going to see ups and downs. You'll see another one of those as we um, go into this building project. So there'll be another little green EP um, that'll show up here if we just if we continue along this line and and approve the building project. And then um, that that will have, that is something that we do not have an operating referendum, so you won't see any blue there. Uh, but that does kind of give you an idea of. So top revenue obviously comes from the state, then local local tax revenue, uh, probably closely followed by lo um, other local revenue, which would be excise tax, um, various other small tax items that, that we are able to capture money from, and then federal. You will see a, a little bit more federal stimulus money with all the ESSER funds that we've been getting. This was all before the crazy end. Anyway, uh, we don't have uh, an operating referendum, so there is no information in that area. Any questions about that was riveting, wasn't it? Everybody was very excited by that. Question. <laughs> <clears throat> no one has any questions. We will adjourn the Board of Finance meeting and reconvene our regular monthly meeting. And first up is Dr. Glaze with the superintendent report. <laughs> you haven't heard enough from you. Um, okay, superintendent's report, just as a reminder, we, uh, the, we do not have school on Monday. Uh, in honor of Martin Luther King Day. 
Um, so that's that's a, that's something that's a little bit different. I did want to talk a little bit about our new welding booths. These are not our new welding booths. These are the old welding booths. Um, and uh, so this is the before. And this is the app. So um, this summer, uh, we uh, got an opportunity to, to uh, really kind of dig into the welding space. And uh, I have to admit, I was a little frightened of what that looked like. Um, and it was, I'm afraid, a little dangerous. dangerous. And I'm certainly glad that we didn't have any issues, and I'm very thankful of that. So we knew we had to do something um, with our welding booths in order to uh, make sure that we had a safe space and also give students a practical experience in welding at the high school level um, as they move on in, in, in their careers. Uh, so um, Jessica Mars, who is our, our, our welding teacher and doing a great job, um, shepherded this this whole project as a first year teacher. She did a great job, and uh, we ordered these in July. Man, it did take forever to get them in, and uh, but we are certainly glad that we got them in, and we're and really thankful for um, Dan Beniful and Eric Johnson and and uh, and Mark for helping us get those put together, as well as uh, the welding students. So. Um, we were able to get these assembled and and also get electricity run to them over a break, and they are up and ready to go. Um, we also were able to buy new tables, uh, welding tables. Um, these are the the different the different glimpse of the booths, and then this one also has a new curtain, and uh, and this is a new exhaust system. Um, if they each of these units has their own. Um, type of exhaust system that is filtered, um, which was really great because the exhaust system that is uh, in that area was original. So it really helped us to be able to have a system that was mounted on top of these booths and actually saved us a considerable amount of money um, from a whole um, from a whole unit um, that we would have had to purchase. So again, uh, we are incredibly excited about this opportunity. We're excited for our kids. And excited that they have a, a facility that is uh, very similar to what they might have in a workplace, um, but most importantly, safe and uh, and also uh, just a, again a better environment for learning. So uh, very excited about that, and want to thank all the people that uh, helped us to get this going. Uh, we also have. Um, our class of 2023 Rising Stars of Indiana. So if those folks are here, we would love for you to come on up. You want to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. There we go. You want to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah. I know you're up. And we want to congratulate these uh, these young people. And uh, we have two others that are not here today, but we're excited about their. Uh, their nomination and these guys just do they rock it academically and uh, we're just excited to have them here and and want to thank Mr. Stilson for nominating and uh, and again it's always great to be able to show off the great things our kids are doing here at Sifton so congratulations and thank you.
Next up on tonight's agenda is Spotlight on Schools, and we have Mrs. Capshaw and Mrs. Nichols here with a presentation. Are you also? Okay. Yes. I, this air player doesn't have it. I have a solution. Okay. Yeah. Like solutions. I will. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> We do need aircraft. I wondered, I was looking at that projector thinking I wasn't yeah, sure I it was the. I've got to disconnect myself. Oh, I don't know if I was plugged in all the way. That should, <coughs> should do it. Yep, we are good. Okay. All right. <laughs> <It's Really solution. laughs> it makes so um, all right. So Dr. Clay has asked us to come in and uh, showcase a new uh, software that we're using. It's called Standard for Success or SFS. Um, as you know, in education, we like to throw as many acronyms um, at people as possible. So um, SFS uh, definitely helps make Mrs. Nichols and uh, my job easier um, with the tracking of graduation pathways. Uh, I know we've introduced that to you before, but uh, basically with the class of 2023 and beyond, um, they have to meet the three requirements. Not only do they have to get the diploma, the credits that are necessary, they have to demonstrate the employability skills, and then they have to complete box three, which is a plethora of different things that they could do. Um, and so this is just um, some software that helps us manage those students, keep track of it, um, prior to that, we've had, you know, we had some things in Harmony that we would use, and then Power School does some things, but it is nice just to have kind of a warehouse here that we can easily check. Um, it does have some features that's easily um, shared with students and parents. We're just now getting to use this, so kind of got this in no November, mm -hmm. October, November. Um, so, you know, it's still, we're still working with it and understanding what all it can do, but we have met with the class of 2023 to schedule for their senior year. Um, and this was helpful in going through the transcripts and saying what class do they need to complete a concentrator in a particular, um, you know, career cluster, career pathway there. So um, he just wanted us to, to showcase that a little bit. Um, so for confidentiality purposes, <laughs> we're using my son, um, but there's nothing in here. So um, that's fine too. But this is what it would look like as a student here. Um, so it allows us to see, you know, if when we meet with the class of 2025, probably by in, end of January, February, then we can say, you know, if he wants to stay on the core 40, 40, this would be his target. If he wanted to say, I want to go for academic honors, then we can select this one. And then as you can see in box three, it also says um, that he's going to try to complete an academic honors diploma there. So uh, an academic honors diploma checks box one for the diploma type, but it also shows uh, post-secondary ready competency that he's preparing for college, essentially. Um, so it would show that he's on target for that as well. Um, and so, you know, it kind of takes you through this. Then um, Mrs. Nichols does 21st Century Scholar. This is a nice place that she could keep track of those. Um, at Warehouse is that. They have to go through a series of tasks. Um, and so, but it's, it's a nice way for her to check or if we're meeting with a student, we know, oh, you're a 21st Century Scholar you want to make sure you have a 2.5 GPA or you want to make sure you're doing the tasks that you need. Um, and then, you know, here we can take notes. So if we talk to Dallas and say, hey, you have to demonstrate employability skills, um, then we could say actually that he's completed this. Um, and when they complete something, it shows in, in green here. And then in our notes, we could type in something like, um, it's caps lock, sorry, uh, football, you know, 21, uh, basketball, one by two or however we want to do that. So we could put in our notes there. Um, schools can, we could validate that through a school roster. Um, we could also then, uh, if a, if a student work-based learning is a popular one that our students use, we could get work permits. We could get a copy of a pay stub. All that can be uploaded. So when you see here, this validation, we can upload that and have it on file. Um, at some point, if the state wants to check and make sure that our students meet all these requirements, then we have a, a good system for that. Um, so those are just a, a couple things, but probably what we use it for most, honestly, is going to be over here. So for example, 
Um, let's say he wasn't going for the academic honors diploma, so it, it, he's going to be a core 40. So now that's not checked. So then we could come in and say, um, you know, for example, he's taking a business class. So if we find these are all the different pathways. So if I find business administration, for example, um, then this would show what class he's currently taking. So this is in progress. So he's currently in principles of business management. Um, when grades are posted, it would show this grade right here. The second semester would show up, but then it also lets us know um, in order to complete this pathway, the student would need a concentrator A, which is this business administration fundamentals, and then also need um, accounting fundamentals, for example. So, you know, when we meet with them again, do we say, hey, do you like your business class? Yeah, I really do. Okay, let's take the next uh, next class in that. Um, and if they say, no, I, I hated my business class, I don't want to go in business, then we can look at his schedule, and he's also in principles of um, automotive services, for example. So he's currently in that class. So if he says, yes, I love that, then we would meet with him and say, well, we should probably get you into brake systems. That's kind of the next progression to that. Um, and then again, we can see that here. So then when we meet with him as a junior, we can say, hey, buddy, you've got two out of three classes for this particular pathway. Let's go ahead and take steering and suspensions. Even if you get the honors diploma, this is a backup. And so it just lets us see um, that not only do you have a check mark in this one area, but you also have a backup plan in case something falls through. Um, for example. So I'll let Mrs. Nichols kind of show you, um, that, that's just a particular student um, to kind of showcase all the things. We could add notes as we meet with them up here. Um, just any activity, here's a place for notes as we, we meet with them. Um, also, you can view a PDF. There's not much to view because he's a freshman and um, mm -hmm. there's just not much there yet. Um, but anyway, this is a quick PDF of what that would look like. Um, we could download these, put them in their files. We could email them to parents. Um, and so, you know, make notes here. And it's just, it's a nice way, um, Mrs. Nichols and I joke that we talk this language every single day. And so for us, it makes complete sense, um, but to explain it to students and parents, and even though it's been explained to them, it, it doesn't always register. You know, they hear it once and they're like, yeah, yeah, I'm going into my freshman year. You know, there's a lot, a lot going through their minds as they enter high school. So they may not quite know hey, I need to continue this pathway. And so it just, it, visuals are always great. So this is a, a nice um, piece of software that allows us to share with parents and students and allows us to track as well to make sure these students are on board. Um, so a dashboard, like for example, she's worked quite a bit with the uh, class of 2022 as seniors. So mm -hmm. kind of let her talk about what she's and, and as here. you can see, the the big benefit here is visuals. Yeah, you know where you see the green, it's like okay, that's good. So, um, when they get their diploma and they've earned it, then that core forty, we we're going to make we're going to check on these kids to make sure that they're um, earning those diplomas um, as they go through high school. So now that we've just hit um, the middle of the school year, we're looking at okay, any grades that we need to double check. If there's anything we need to retake, those kind of things. Um, so you can see here where um. This is the last class that needed to have I-STEP. And so therefore, um, the kids who didn't pass, this is where we're, I'm going through there and looking at to make sure that they've got everything. Um, the green flags, um, kind of our last step is going to be ASVAB um, to get the kids to meet all of the, one of those requirements in the um, third bucket. But, um, you know, it's kind of, you know, a nice visual to go through all of these kids here and to see um, what they've done. Um, I use this quite a bit whenever we're doing um, case conferences with students. Um, or if I have a student that we've had an honors diploma track and now they're falling off. So what are we going to do for the next step? I mean, like Mrs. Pepshaw said that we're oftentimes looking at, even though you are doing honors diploma, you know, let's go into an area that you'd like to have some experience with. Let's gain some knowledge there someplace else too. Yeah, so in here, and here's, like she said, great visual of the student pass, so we don't have to have those three areas. Um, so she's done a lot with that. For the juniors that we've met with, um, really just kind of was doing that last week. So here, nothing is really too much in green yet. Um, you know, we have some notes in here. This is, means we have proof of that service or work-based learning, um, but, you know, it, it's not quite as complete as what the senior class would be, and that would be expected. And then something like... Uh, the sophomore, current sophomore class we haven't touched. Um, so, you know, right now, this is, it's pretty, 
we've maybe played around with the kid, but for the most part, it defaults to 440. And then as we meet with that class, then we're going in and, and making those changes. And it, it's always pulling from um, power school. So my understanding is that like on Mondays, it's going to pull freshmen. Correct. Tuesday is going to pull sophomores. So each week it's updating whatever we've entered or whatever the student has done, or even their grade book, mm -hmm. you know, their grades. Yeah, they've got the in-progress grades. Yeah, so it's constantly interacting with power school. Yep. Is there anything that we didn't touch on? No, I, I think that's great. And, uh, and, and again, this just is another tool. The, the graduation pathways have become a very complicated process. And uh, first of all, they're, we have two great counselors who can keep all that straight because I can't. And uh, so hopefully the software can even help help our parents understand the process a little bit more and, and also our students because it, it is complicated. Um, and, and honestly, it's going to get more complicated uh, as we move down this road. You know, and in some ways, it's like, you know, Carrie pointed out that they get into something going, whoa, this is not what I thought it was. It's like, okay, we found out now, yeah. as opposed <laughs> to later on, it cost us money. But we do, and we do try to encourage the freshmen to take at least two different principals classes so they can try out two different pathways. Um, the state really is what is saying, look, we want our students to start a, you know, the business has spoken. Business has spoken. And so we want our students to have a better idea of what they're doing earlier on in life. And so you're going to see more um, career, emphasis on career, um, preparing for you know, those things, even in middle school. As they, and then by the time they come to high school, you know, we need. And so we're about, we've been into the eighth grade a couple of different times to talk about, look, these are the pathways that we have at our school. We also have the vocational programs at John Hines, too. So we have a decent selection, you know, for us to be a small right. school. And I would say, um, Andrew, to answer that, yes. I mean, it does force them to kind of think about it as as a concentrator as opposed to, I mean, we still have kind of our random electives like, oh, I just like English. Well, okay, take an English elective, but it's not necessarily attached to a career. So at least this, it does give a concentration of, you know, a principles as a foundation, it's an overall course. And then the sequential courses are going to be a little more focused on like in the auto services, for example, like brake system. So you're really focusing on the brakes and then your next one is steering and suspension. So you're just kind of then honing in on each individual part. So same thing with the business. Um, and I will say for a school of our size, um, and one thing that I, if we can keep, by all means keep, because we currently have, I think, eight, eight complete pathways um, and in a variety of amazing. business and um, you know advanced manufacturing, you know, uh, automotive, construction, I mean, just um, interior design yeah, and culinary yeah. arts. And, two in fact. Yeah. So I think at minimum eight, and this was just starting, and I think, you know, on some of those, we can continue just to add a, a few more. So, you know, possibly by 10, and that's just in-house at the high school. And then, like Mrs. Nichols said, plus we have the vocational option. So um, as the state continues to push careers and, and prep for that, um, I feel like we're in a very good position to, to meet that, um, and I'm thankful we are. So again, thank keeping our vocational um, Program programs in line, yeah. yes. And, and yeah, we do appreciate the program too. Yes. It's, it's very helpful to the plan. Absolutely. Any other questions for us? Is there a, um, I know you, you said that you can use this down in middle school. Is there, I don't know how to, how to ask this, is the software have, a, the capability of sharing this with the middle school counselors. Right, that the you... middle school is in, is, is the students are in that database. I think we can go into the middle school. I just look at the high school. Right. I, I click that box, but it has a box okay. to click the middle school. So I'm thinking that Callaway could too. Right. And I'm, yeah, again, we're kind of, um, especially just learning it, we're kind of just, okay, what do we need to know at right. this time? But I think it, it could be shared, but a lot of what has to be done does have to be done while they're in their four years in high school. So if they did, you know, uh, student council in middle school or something like that, wonderful. But if they don't do it in high school, then we can't count that as a service-based okay. uh, yeah, running experience. So, um, so yeah, I think it could be good for maybe exploration. But yeah, there's there are other software packages out there. The state of Indiana has 
revamped its Indiana Career Explorer, which is what we in the past have always used, and um, <laughs> supposed to get pushed out in September. Um, and it's literally one of those um, websites that we go in, take different assessments, and then it gives you a suggestion, like 10 different career suggestions. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that you will see your middle school kids using um, to get familiar with. They're supposed to investigate how right. much do they make, what's the education they <laughs> need, all that. And then we're going down there to kind of supplement that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, some of the kids like, I want to, I want to dance explore or I want to explore. Mm -hmm. Right. So we tell them maybe go into business. You know, no matter what you're going to do, you're going to want to go into business. And so yeah, so that's been that's been good going into the seventh grade um, careers class with Mrs. Uh, Mr. Castor, Mrs. Light. Yeah. Not knowing what you guys have had before, I think that I like this because it looks like you don't lose those students. You know, it seems like or you see each student individually, so there's not somebody who calls through and says, "Oh, we meant." Try and find that you know, right yeah and like it is i mean when you're dealing with individual. roughly 500 students yeah. and they're they didn't get a c or better or yeah. yeah and it's um it, i mean we hope nobody falls to right the but i'm just saying it seems like it <laughs> give you a, enough you know like you said when it's even color coded it yeah how should go oh that, my eye is drawn to that mm -hmm. that missed somebody that's a good question does it alert you though if a like if uh, somebody that's on their on the uh, academic diploma um does it does it alert you when the grades do come through that They've fallen below a C or it'll um, do total GPA, I believe. So okay. like if they're in order to get the honors diploma, GPA has to be a three point or above. And on on that, like if I went back to um, Dallas really quickly, I'm sorry. And then um it'll it'll show you what their GPA is. Uh -huh. Um which that's helpful at first, but honestly, it's kind of taking us going over transcripts to really kind of find so like here we would be able to see this um the academic honors he doesn't have but it hasn't been it hasn't been pulled no. pulled there yet i mean grades were posted but it's not pulled there um and then same thing with like a concentrator they have to have a 2.0 so when we do pull up um uh, automotive services um we can see their grades and then it, sh it once it was stored it would say hey he has a one credit you know an a in that class so his gpa for that particular area would be a 4.0 so it would tell us that, which is, is nice. So if we have a kid, maybe they've taken six classes, but they have a 1.2 GPA in those classes. Yeah, it's not I, gonna, I see it with seniors all yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, it's not going to cut it. So okay. so it helps us with that. Honors diploma, we have to kind of comb those over a little bit. Or... Yeah, and the other side, sometimes kids get nervous, which is a good thing. But <laughs> we always say it's at the end. When you graduate, at the end of that eighth semester, that you have to hit that three points. Sure. Um, the kids are this next junior class will have to take the SAT. Um, so that'll be done during the school day. Um, and it's, is it going to be digital format? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we should. <coughs> and then I. So that plays into digital. your whole pathway. Right. But it does have a grade manager button. So here we I can see what classes he's in and the grades here. So. Um, he doesn't know his grades are being broadcasted on the screen <laughs> right now. But. <laughs> He's, he's all right with it. Um, so, um, you know, so that it is kind of a quick reference. If a kid is on academic honors, we pull up that grade manager quickly. We're looking for anything below a C. That helps us highlight something. So so that part is is nice. That's just another feature of that, for example. So. Okay. okay. Thank you guys very Thank much. You guys Thank you guys for it. listening. Thank you for purchasing software that makes our life easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you're working so hard on that. Yeah, yes. I appreciate it. All right. Next on tonight's agenda is department reports that were in your packet. We had a student achievement and learning from Mr. Jaworski, student services and transportation from Mr. Clark, food services from Mr. Prohl, and technology from Mr. Gingrich. Did anyone have any questions? on those comments. Okay. Terry, I, I had one question. Okay. If, if Mr. Jaworski, you don't mind this is a question. Um, that was a significant amount of data that you were able to pull together and yeah. <clears throat> try to put into a, a good user-friendly format for us to look at. Um, my question is, 
I I have some recollection that NWDA scores are able to be referenced across the country as well as kind of a geographical area. Is that correct still? Um I am familiar with the national norms of it. There there's actually a table within NWA that gives us those national norms. Whether it's regional or not, I'm not familiar with that. But yeah, okay. we I actually um what was shared in, in the director's notes I, I gave to you, uh, it's really just a small piece of some of the larger data we've done. Um, I actually have a, a presentation I can share with you as soon as Dr. Glaze has got that's, that pulled up. That's fine. I guess my, my curiosity was, you know, we, we had some areas that were growing and doing really well, and then we have a lot of areas for opportunity as well that weren't reaching the projected goals. I'm just curious if we're seeing that that's a national trend impacted by all of the, the kind of the state of the world or if we're kind of operating in a, in a vacuum. Yeah, no. Uh, so again, we don't have access to uh, other schools and WA data individually. So it's hard, like for example, like with iLearn, we can pull that data from, okay, how are other school districts in our area performing on uh, I learn. We have access to that information. We don't necessarily, at least not I'm familiar, familiar with, have access to their NWA scores. That's where the national norms do come into play. We can see where we compared to the national average. Um, and that's about as, as accurate as we can get. So we can see, okay, relatively speaking, are we really that far off between achievement and we can also compare it with growth. Where's our achievement compared to the nation? Where's our growth compared to the nation average? Um, and we, I can actually jump right into that if you're curious to learn more about I, that. I don't necessarily, if that wasn't part of the, the plan tonight, that's okay. No, it, you can, um, okay, yeah. that, that'd be great. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the segue. Uh, <laughs> so uh, again, this first slide, just kind of giving you a, a quick overview of what, I'm, what I want to briefly discuss with you. Um, first off, this is just a snapshot. Um, it's three snapshots over the course of the year, one in the fall, one in the winter, one in the spring. We actually took this one before winter break um, for the most part, because again, we don't like having that two week break and then assessing kids right afterwards. Um, again, kind of skews the data a little bit. Um, what we're uh, what we're focusing on with, with this data analysis is on the winter NWA, our growth from fall to winter, comparing it from this year to last year, since last year was the first time we took NWA. And then what do those pro projections look like um, for iLearn? Because that's also another component of um, the NWA test. Um, and then I'll, I'll kind of wrap up with a few big takeaways. So uh, this first piece of data here is our math achievement in the winter. Um, again, relatively aligned to our national norms. Again, real quickly to read this, the blue bars are uh, Tipton's uh, RIT score, so basically the score they get on NWA, and the red is the national average for that. So you, as you can see, as it goes along, yes, it, it should increase over the years. Achievement goes up uh, as students learn more and more. Um, again, kindergarten, first grade, above average, second grade, right around average, same with third and fourth and fifth. And again, you'll see there um, sixth and seventh grade, eighth grade, a little bit uh, below average, um, and that's about Again, for math, referencing math, uh, middle school was a little bit below average uh, of what we would expect it to be at uh, from a national standpoint. If you uh, flip over to the next slide, the one I'm more interested in is the growth because the, the achievement is generally going to fit pretty closely, uh, nice and snug with our um, national averages. The achievement is where it's a little bit more interesting to see how our kids growing over the course of the year. Again, just a snapshot, fall to winter right now, um, but it does give us a little bit of uh, stop and check to see where we're at. Um, so again, looking at this, um, third grade had some really incredible growth. Again, similar to what we saw with iLearn uh, last summer um, when we were looking at this data before, uh, our third grade had some really incredible um, scores regarding iLearn. Uh, in math. And so again, we're seeing that reflected here in their their uh, NWA scores. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this in a bit, um, but I, I think it's worth noting now also is that that's a very consistent th thing we're seeing across uh, not just a single year blip. This is a second year now. We're seeing some pretty impressive growth. That's also including the fact that for this year, and I probably should mention on the first slide, uh, when we're talking about achievement, our students came into this year much lower than they came into the start of last year and before that 
that was lower than the year before that. So over the last few years, again, we're seeing the impact of um, the disruption of learning to students as far as like where kids are starting at the start of each school year. So that's why I'm much more interested in see where's our growth? What are we doing with the students once we do have them back in school? And for the majority of this semester, um, we've had the kids in school. We've had kids in and out for different reasons, obviously for safety protocols, but um, having the kids in here more, we're seeing a little bit better growth. And I'll talk about that in a minute, but just real briefly again, third grade was fantastic. Fourth and fifth grade also had some uh, above average scores. Again, middle school growth is a little bit lower than we want, um, but there is still growth there. Not quite where we want with that national average, but it's positive growth. And the same goes with our, our kindergarten, first grade. Great growth, not quite where we want it to be, but again, we're working on that. That's something that, uh, as long as we're moving forward, that's something that's uh, encouraging. Uh, if you want to slip to the next one. This is our reading achievement. Again, this is grades K through 10. Again, similar to the, the math achievement, you look at that blue is where Tipton's uh, uh, scores are and red is where that national average is. Um, again, you'll see all of our uh, scores are above those national norms except for, again, grades six through eight. Again, those are slightly below where we want them to be. If we move on to the uh, reading growth, uh, again, this is the one that really jumps out to me for a few things. So first of all, um, this is how we're comparing fall scores to winter scores. How much our students grew from the start of the year to middle of the year. Um, again, we are above average in kindergarten and third grade, right? Those are fantastic. That's something I'm, I'm really encouraged to see that our kindergartners and our third graders, again, third grade with I read, um, being above average in their growth. Uh, everywhere else, again, growth is below expectations. Again, not where we want them to be. And especially concerning is eighth grade, all right? Very concerned with this area. Um, uh, the data really just screams that we need to offer our eighth graders some more authentic uh, reading opportunities. And that's not just on our English teachers either. That's something I really want to make sure is that we are not singling out any individual teacher with any of these scores or any of this growth. This really is a collective effort from top to bottom. How are we servicing these kids, not just in a single class, but across their grade level, their entire time in this building? What opportunities are we giving them to develop their reading skills? All right. This is a direct reflection of that. Again, just a snapshot, just a comparison from the fall to the winter. But again, it gives us actionable data that says this is a problem. This is a red flag. We need to address it and we need to address it now because I think everybody in this room and across our district would agree that some of these scores and particularly some of these growth scores are just unacceptable. Um, but again, I, I want to finish this a bit on, on a high note. I want to give a quick shout out to our seventh grade. You'll notice that in middle school tends to kind of be um, – uh, the beating post here as far as like, hey, we can always do better. We can, we need to do better in middle school. And I want to tell you that we are seeing some improvement in middle school, particularly with our seventh grade teachers um, to going from, we've got kind of slightly declining scores as far as like growth over the years. And then again, sixth grade, a little bit below where we wanted to be. Seventh grade pops that back up. Um, I'm really proud of some of the work we're doing in seventh grade. I know Mrs. Kick does uh, really send their praises to us and our administrative team as far as the kind of work that's being put in with that seventh grade team. So uh, kudos to them as well. Uh, next slide here, we've got the math achievement. So this is now, so the first handful of slides, we're comparing Tipton to the national average. This is now comparing Tipton to ourselves, right? The green bars are from uh, this current uh, winter scores and the purplish bars are from uh, uh, last year. So again, uh, comparing achievement, obviously, like I said before, generally speaking, our achievement uh, is lower than it was last year. Again, we got the kids, and if you remember in the fall, our fall scores were lower than they were the year before, right? So we're starting off kind of behind the eight ball. You'll notice though that we do have some grade levels that have a slightly higher achievement. Um, again, grades four, five, and six, higher achievement in their winter score this year compared to last year. So it, it's hard to give any kind of uh, absolutes to this saying, well, they're all good or they're all bad. It's something where you have to look at this case by case and we're identifying uh, a few trends here and there. Again, uh, four and five above average, same with sixth grade, uh, pretty solidly above where uh, we were last year. Next slide, again, if we look at that growth compared to last year, this is one that I'm generally excited about. So the way to read this one, again, uh, if you, Again, this is in math. If your green bar is above that purple bar, if the green bar is higher than that purple bar, that means that you had more growth this year than last year. Again, 
going through this left to right, again, kindergarten, first grade, slightly below uh, where our growth was last year. But then you look at second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, those are all well above where it was. And especially a big shout out to our eighth grade math. Um, looking at that, we did have negative growth last year. We had positive growth from fall to winter this year. So that is something that's rather encouraging. Um, trying to trying to work with our, our middle school math team. Uh, it's it's not it's not the easiest subject to teach middle schoolers, that's for sure. Um, so it's honestly very exciting that in each of those middle school categories, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, we did see better growth this year compared to last year. Again, this is just a couple snapshots fall to winter, but encouraging thus far. Next slide there. Um, reading achievement again. Overall achievements uh, a little bit below last year, uh, except in grades uh, six and grade nine. Overall, though, there's nothing here that really jumps out too far. Um, but if we go to the next slide, when we go into the reading growth, uh, again, first thing I want to do is I want to highlight uh, the work that's being done in grades two, three, uh, seven, and nine. Uh, as you can see, I mean, the, our reading growth is kind of all over the place. Um, some are really great. Some are pretty much where they were last year, and some are, are a little disappointing. Um, you know, currently we're discussing this data with our teachers, and um, we're looking for some kind of explanations for some of this data, right? I mean, like I said, you've got kindergarten, uh, first grade, uh, where else is there? About fourth grade, even sixth grade. You've got pretty consistent to where we were um, last year, uh, but then you look at grades like second grade, third grade, um, even where else? If you look at ninth grade, we had a lot of loss of learning last year. We've got a little bit of growth this year. So it's it's finding those little things and finding, okay, what did we change from last year to this year? How do we bottle that up and how do we continue to build on that? Um, I think that's something that's at least worth having, like I said, those conversations about with that staff. Um, if you go to the next slide, these are our projections. Again, I learn projections. As I told Dr. Glaze when I was kind of previewing this with him, I take these with a giant grain of salt. Um, like I, I've mentioned before in a previous uh, board meeting, uh, the projections can vary um, pretty pretty wildly. Um, if I'm just looking at this from what happened last year, uh, they can either be underselling us by about 11%, or they can be overselling us by about 17%. So I mean, it's a pretty pretty wide margin that they're they're shooting there. Um, so like I said, big grain of salt, I will say for the math projections, they generally undershoot us as far as projection where we're going to be at. So for that being about, uh, 34, 35%, uh, passing, if I had to base it strictly off of that, I would imagine we're probably closer to that 37, 38%, not too far off, but a little bit higher up than what they're giving us. If you switch over to the, uh, reading projections, they tend to overestimate how well we're going to do these again. Um, just looking at last year as a reference, uh, pretty much every projection that NWA gave us regarding uh, iLearn, well overshot uh, by at least 5%, if not 17% uh, overshooting. So while that's encouraging to see, hey, we have a pretty significant, over 50% um, projected to pass, again, like I said, take with a grain of salt. I would like to see that. I would like to see even more than that. Um, but I also want to be realistic and understand that it's not all roses, right? We need to make sure we find out what are the things that are working, what's not. That's why, again, I, I look at that growth and see what are the effective practices that are being in place in those different grade levels who are successful, and how do we replicate that in other areas? Um, again, my big takeaways uh, that I just want you to, to leave with, one is I feel very confident that we have pretty much stopped the free fall and they're falling off the cliff from uh, the pandemic and the disruption of learning. I feel like we're starting to right that ship, right? It's not something that's going to be fixed overnight. This is going to take a few years to try to recover from all of this. Um, a very traumatic experience for, for everybody involved, students and teachers and families. Um, but I feel like we've, we've pretty much stemmed the bleeding. Uh, there needs to be some more intervention for our, our middle school, not just not just in our math, but also in our reading. As we saw, we have some uh, pretty discouraging scores regarding growth in in our reading uh, classes. I'd like to I'd like to see us uh, make some steps towards that. And I know uh, Mrs. Kick has already got a few plans in place to address some of those issues. Um, Tipton High School. Again, you'll notice that I didn't talk a whole lot about the high school scores. First off, um, we only test ninth and tenth grade, and this year um, we we were given the algebra test instead of the uh, six plus math tests. So that data is not really com comparable, and it also doesn't have national norms with it. 
uh, because it's a subject specific test. What we're going to be doing uh, starting next year is we're going to be having uh, K through 12 students all given NWA um, so we can have that consistent uh, longitudinal data data to actually see how students are doing year after year. Again, it's a data point. It's just a single data point, but at least it's something for us to point to and say, this is showing that we're having success or this is showing that we need a little bit more support in these areas. And just to kind of wrap up overall, just better growth than last year, which again, last year was a free fall, um, but encouraging signs that we're able to at least stem it. And now we can start building on that kind of foundation. Um, any questions, uh, anything? Oh yeah, real quick, sorry. What we're doing <laughs> to, to wrap it up. Uh, we are conducting data talks in our PLCs uh, between our elementary and middle school. I know uh, Ms. Kicks has had the ability to speak with uh, many of her uh, teachers individually. Um, NWA Map Accelerator, that's a program. Uh, it's through Khan Academy, if you're familiar with that, um, that personalizes instruction for students in math um, to kind of address some of the issues that uh, individual students are having based on their NWA uh, scores. Instructional focus is going to be shifted, identifying where are areas of weakness, how can we improve on those. Um, and then finally, uh, I think what's really important in the elementary had somebody come in and work with them recently, uh, our spiral review, identifying what are those essential skills that kids need to learn in order to be successful on iLearn and be successful in the future. Um, following through with some, some spiral review will be uh, beneficial for them there. So if you have more questions, trust me, I could go on for several hours on this. So be thankful it was limited to about 15 minutes. Um, I can talk more about this. I can give you more data. I can give you all the numbers. It's all right here. Dr. Glaze had an opportunity to kind of uh, not fall asleep when I was talking about it. Um, <laughs> other data uh, that you want to analyze, just let me know. Or if you have any kind of specific concerns you'd like to share with me, um, I'd be happy to, to speak with you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Next on tonight's agenda is the financial report. And Dr. Glaze has all that data for I us. Do. And I'll try to make this fast. Um, okay, uh, for 2021, we did end the year with a cash balance of 209,974 uh, in the education fund, um, a cash balance of 1.9 million in operations, in debt service, uh, 916, six, or 866. And then rainy day fund, uh, 1.5 million. Um, uh, we did not need again to borrow from the rainy day fund to cover expenses in the education fund. Uh, with the exception of the education fund, all cash balances are strong as we move forward into the 2022 budget. All right. Thank you, Dr. Glaze. Next is the, uh, on the agenda is consideration to approve the advertisement of bids for our mowing and trimming service. Our current vendor contract for mowing and trimming service ended on December 31st of 2021. Mowing service bid specifications will be advertised twice in the local paper and must be submitted by January the 31st by 1 p.m. The successful bid will be approved at the February monthly board meeting. In order to attain the best bid and increase interest in the bidding process, the board is encouraged to entertain a two-year package. It is recommended that the Board of Trustees approve the advertisement for bids for lawn mowing and trimming service for 2022 and 2023. So if that is your desire, I would entertain a motion and a second. I have a to question. Uh, will this be... Um adjusted when they put both of them sequentially we've already we've already adjusted it okay um so essentially what we're saying is our people are going to take care of the athletic field okay and uh the we the bid would be for the areas around around it students. okay so, yes very good i move to uh approve the advertisement for the bids of the mowing and trimming service motion and a second to advertise for the bids for mowing and trimming all in favor say aye aye any opposed all right thank you next is other and dr glaze 
Well, it, uh, it, it's very exciting, uh, very exciting time here at Tipton. And uh, one of those exciting um, opportunities is uh, to um, uh, work with a, a local company for naming rights of facilities. And uh, with this uh, particular uh, facility, this is our new TCSC uh, greenhouse uh, that will be um, known from this point on as the total seed production greenhouse. And uh, so we're very excited to um, offer that opportunity. And uh, a little bit later uh, on tonight, uh, we will be hopefully approving that contract. And uh, I do want to take this opportunity to thank the, the Conaways and all the things that they do for our community. And they've kind of spearheaded this along with some others um, with the Soul Greenhouse Project. And it seems very fitting uh, that uh, they, the naming rights would, uh, would follow along with that um, help and, and expertise they've provided. And uh, we certainly thank them and uh, look forward to our continued uh, work with them. So thank you. Yeah, I think you definitely. And uh, Dr. Glaze is up next. I'll just let him wheel right into that. Okay. Actually, uh, Mayor Dozel, is he still here? Yes, he is. He was hiding back there behind people, and now he just kind of appears. He's like Superman. Very brief. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think there's something about this meeting. I, I thought I'd pay you back for a last night's meeting. So uh, <laughs> sincerely, <laughs> I think it's probably still open. Uh, Dr. Glaze was kind enough uh, to go to our city council meeting uh, last night. Did a wonderful job representing the school. Sincerely appreciate it. And I would say our meetings are more exciting, but not necessarily more productive than you got here. So <laughs> thank you very much, Dr. Glaze, for that. Uh, this evening, I have the honor of representing the community of Tipton. Uh, the citizens of Tipton uh, would like to recognize with a proclamation the important job that you do as school board members here for Tipton. Uh, so what I'd like to do is uh, read this proclamation, recognizing a school board recognition and appreciation month. Whereas the mission of public schools is to meet the diverse educational needs of all children and to empower them to become competent, productive contributors to the democratic society and an ever-changing world. Whereas local school board members are committed to children and believe that all children can be successful learners and that the best education is tailored to the individual needs of the child. Whereas local school board members work closely with parents, educational professionals, and other community members to create the educational vision we want for our students. And whereas local school board members are responsible for ensuring the structure that provides a solid foundation for our school system. And whereas local school board members are strong advocates for public education and are responsible for communicating the needs of the school district to the public and the, and the public's expectations to the district. Now therefore I, Thomas E. Dozel, serving as mayor of the city of Tipton do hereby declare my appreciation to the members of Tipton Community School Corporation Board of Education and proclaim the month of January 2022 as School Board Recognition Month. Further, I urge all citizens to join me in recognizing the dedication and hard work of local school board members and in working with them to mold our education system that meets the needs of both today's and tomorrow's children. Done under my hand with the great seal of the city of Tipton attached this 11th day of January, 2022. Thank you very much for all you do in the community. It's sincerely appreciated and uh, we look forward to a continued relationship. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next is we jump to new business. We don't have any old business. And next is consideration to approve substitute teacher pay rate changes. In order to increase the number of subs available and to incentivize the number of days substitutes are willing to fill open positions at Tipton Community School Corporation, we are asking the board to consider the following changes in the daily substitute teacher pay rates. 
daily rate increases $110 for retired Tiffin Community School teachers, $100 for subs with bachelor's degrees, $100 or $85 for subs with high school diploma or GED. Other incentives include free lunch, free adult lunch for our cafeteria from our cafeteria and bonus system tied to the number of days each month an individual will sub at Tipton Community School Corporation buildings of $80 if a sub works six to nine days a month, $100 if a sub works 10 or more days a month. This proposal will increase our overall substitute budget approximately $13,000, including will sub sur surcharges. It is recommended that the Board of Trustees approve these pay increases as written. Need a motion and a second to do that. Make a motion to approve the substitute teacher pay changes. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you very much. Next up is consideration to approve mileage rate reimbursement for 2022. As of January 1, 2022, the federal mileage rate reimbursement increased two and a half cents to 58 and a half cents a mile. This is the rate Tipton Community School Corporation employees can use to can use to reimburse travel related to professional development and meetings not held on Tipton Community School Corporation campuses. The recommendation, the recommendation before you is to increase Tipton Community School Corporation mileage reimbursements for 2022 federal rate to the federal rate of 58 and a half cents per mile. We need a motion and a second. Move to approve the mileage rate reimbursement for 2022. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. Next up is consideration to approve the renewal of workers, workers' compensation insurance. For the last few years, Tippin Community Schools has been a part of a self-insurance group through ISESC group. This policy is designed for schools who have had high claim history due to workers' compensation claims. During the time using the policy, Tipton Community School Corporation has incurred annual expenses as great as $182,000 and as small as $4,000. With self-insurance, it is hard to predict expenditures and makes budgeting difficult. Since our claims history has improved, we are now eligible to move to a more traditional workers' compensation policy at a cost of the policy of $42,517 with accident fund. Accident fund is the recommendation of our agent, Rob Steele, from Assured Partners. Any questions, comments? If not, I would entertain, entertain a motion to approve our renewal work compensation insurance. I move to approve the renewal for workers' compensation insurance. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Next up is consideration to pay 12 month classified employees for unused vacation days. The classified employees handbook allows for 12 month employees to receive payment in lieu of days for up to five unused vacation days during a calendar year. Payment is based on the employee's daily rate multiplied by the number of unused days up to five. It is recommended the Board of Trustees approve payments for unused vacation days for the three employees that were listed in the memo. A motion and a second to do that. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Next is consideration to approve plans and specifications for the 2022 outdoor and extracurricular co-curricular facility improvement project. In your board packet, it is near complete plans for the outdoor and extracurricular and co-curricular facility improvements. All documents are part of your packet with the exception of the site plan, which is too large to upload. And we saw those in the work session. In order to maintain our completion timeline, the Board of Trustees will need to approve the near complete plans at tonight's meeting. It is recommended that the Board of Trustees approve these near complete plans as written with the understanding that some, charge, some changes will be made uh, before they are sent to the bid. 
So we need a motion and a second, unless someone has some questions, comments. I move to approve the plans and specifications for the 2022 outdoor extra extracurricular facility improvement. Motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. Next is bus driver ECA pay rate increase. In late 2021, the Board of Trustees approved a 6% approved and a 6% hourly 6% raise for hourly employees. In order to remain competitive with surrounding districts, this 6% increase should also include what is paid to our bus drivers who drive extracurricular events and activities for the corporation. Current pay scale is athletic ECA and field trip pay. Monday through Friday pay is $25 minimum up minimum up to two hours and $12.50 thereafter. Athletic ECA field trip pay for Saturday, Sunday, and holidays is $75 minimum up to six hours and $12.50 thereafter. 6% to the hourly rate is a 75 cent increase for the total of $13.25 an hour. 6% added to the trip rate would increase Monday, Friday rate to $26.50 and Saturday, Sunday, and holiday to $79.50. We are appreciative of our bus drivers who are willing to drive these events, and it is recommended that the Board of Trustees approve these increases effective January the 12th, 2022. Any questions or comments? If not, I'd entertain a motion to approve that increase. Make a motion to approve the bus driver rate increase. Motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Next is appointment of Robert Schultz to the Tipton Community School Corporation Building Corporation Board of Directors. Tipton Community School Building Corporation Board of Directors is a three-member board appointed by Tipton Community School Corporation Board of Trustees. Current members are Tom McKinney, President, David Lacey, Secretary, and Ron Warner, Member. Mr. Warner no longer lives in the district and is no longer eligible for appointment. Since the building corporation plays a vital role in the upcoming building project, a complete board is necessary to ensure a quorum of members are in attendance. It is recommended that the Board of Trustees appoint Dr. Robert Schultz as a member of the Tipton Community School Building Corporation Board of Directors. Questions, comments? If not, motion and a second to... Motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Is Dr. Schultz here? Yeah. We welcome him to the board. I think he'll do a great job for us. Next is other matters to come before the board. Anybody have anything? I'd like to uh, reference back to Dr. Glazing's comment. Um, and I'd like to make a motion to accept the contract for greenhouse naming rights with Turtle Creek Production. Second. Motion, second. Any questions, comments, discussion on that? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve that contract. So moved. Okay. okay. I make. <laughs> I make a motion to accept the contract for the new greenhouse naming rights with Total Seed Production. Okay. Sorry, I guess I That's okay. did that twice. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we wanted to make sure it was right. All right. Yeah. I guess, That's okay. I guess, uh, I guess so. <laughs> and April, you seconded that yeah. first time. Okay. All in favor of approving that contract, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Aaron, I don't know whether you would want to say anything or you're, you're welcome to come up and say something if you'd like. It's, that's totally up to you. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. And thank you. Really excited for the partnership. It's great. Anyone else have anything? 
Next, I'll just go over the advisory committees real quick. And business Affairs is a meeting next Monday. Is that still on? Okay. And February 14th, Branding and Public Relations Committees are meeting. And March the 14th, Facilities and Technology. I believe that's when we're changing, correct? Is that? Yes. That is, that is correct. I'm sorry. Okay. That's correct. Yes. All right. And schedule of events. Monday is uh, Martin Luther King Day, and there's no school. January the 19th, Tipton Academy begins. February 1st is the spring ADM report, and February the 8th is our next school board meeting. And next up is comments from the community. And Sherry Leffler, we have you up first. Um, when you think about me, I do not like public speaking. <laughs> um, there's also a couple of other things that you probably know about me. You can already hear it in my voice. I'm an emotional person. I wear my feelings on my sleeve. I'm a rule follower. I do what I'm told to do. I love my students, but something has to change. I tell my kids all the time they have to advocate for themselves, and if I don't do that for myself, I'm not really being a role model for them. I've been a part of Tipton since fifth grade. I go to my students at sports. I support them. Once they leave me, they're not, they're not just a fourth grader. They're mine forever, and I'm a blue double through and through. I've been teaching here, and I've always wanted to be a teacher, but that joy, it's slowly disappearing. We've only been back for about a week and a half, and I've heard many teachers say already that they're sure that they can't continue this if it keeps the way that it is. I'm feeling this way too. I, I don't know what else to say, but this isn't sustainable. It's not due to COVID. Our spirits are low, and I encourage you to ask why. Why are they like that? Please. As a society, we don't always ask those questions that are difficult because we don't want to hear those answers. Please ask. Thank you. And next up is our final speaker, Luanne Millet. All right. Next is on the agenda is the adjournment of the meeting. So I'd entertain a motion and a second to adjourn. In a second, all in favor of adjournment of tonight's meeting, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for coming.